Where hast thou been, sister? Thy swine, sister? Where thou? A sailor's wife, a chestnut's in her lap. I'm munched and munched and munched. Give me, quote I. A righty witch. A rump-fed runyon cried. Her husband's to Aleppo gone, master of the tiger. But in a sieve I'll tether sail, and like a rat without a tail, I'll do, I'll do, and I'll do. Sleep shall never night nor day hang upon his penthouse lids. Weary seven nights, nine times nine, shall he dwindle, peak and pine. Though his bark cannot be lost, Yet it shall be tempest-tossed, look what I have. Show me. Show me. Here I have a pilot's thumb, racked as homewards he did come. A drum! A drum! Macbeth doth come. Weary sisters, sisters, hand in hand, Posters of the sea and land, thus to go about, about. Thrice to thine, thrice to mine, and thrice again to make up mine. Peace! The charms wound up. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. How far is it called the forest? What are these? So withered and so wild in their attire that look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are aren't. Live you? Or are you aught that man may question? Now you seem to understand me by each at once her choppy finger laying upon her skinny lips. You should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak if you can. What are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, then of glams. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth, that shalt be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are you fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly you show? My noble partner you greet with present grace, and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope that he seems wrapped withal. To me, you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favours nor your hate. Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth. And greater. Not so happy. Yet, much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail, Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. About my father's death, I know I'm Thane of Glams. But how of Cawdor? The Thane of Cawdor lives a prosperous gentleman, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Cawdor. Say from whence you have this strange intelligence, and why upon this blasted heath you stuff our way with such prophetic greeting. Speak! I charge you! The earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air, and what seemed corporal melted as breath into the wind. Would that stay? <laughs> Were such things here as we do speak about, or have we eaten on the insane route that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And Thane of Cawdor, too. Weren't it not, sir? <laughs> to the selfsame tune and words. Who's here? The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. <laughs> we are sent to give thee from our royal master. Thanks. 
and for an earnest of a greater honour, he bade me from him call the Thane of Cordor, in which addition hail most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What? Can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cordor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did line the rebel with hidden help and vantage, or that with both he laboured in his country's rack, I know not. But treason's capital, confessed and proved, have overthrown him. Glams and Thane of Cordo, the greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Do you not hope your children shall be kings? when those that gave the Thane of Corda to me promised no less to them. That trusted home might yet enkindle you into the crown besides the Thane of Cordor. <laughs> but tis strange, and oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Mm -hmm. Cousins, a word, I pray. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you, gentlemen. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why has it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cordor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair? and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature. Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise. And nothing is but what is not. Look our partners wrapped. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir. New honours come upon him like our strange garments, cleave not to their mould, but with the aid of use. <laughs> come what, come may. Time and the hour runs through the roughest today. Brother Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me your favour, my dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let's talk the king. Think upon what hath chanced. At more time, the interim having waited, let us speak our free hearts each to other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friend. <laughs>